Hi everyone, my name is Lily Davoudian and I'm a senior product manager on the Microsoft Defender for Cloud team. I'm joined today by my colleague TJ Benasek, a principal product manager on the Microsoft Sentinel team, and we're very excited to share and, and walk through the next iteration of the CMMC solution that we've recently released in Microsoft Sentinel. CMMC is the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. It combines many maturity and, and cyber best practices from multiple frameworks with inputs from the defense industrial base and various Department of Defense stakeholders. The new iteration of CMMC streamlines the requirements from, three, from five to three levels of cybersecurity with a focus on foundational, advanced, and expert. CMMC is a really imperative part of the work that we see our customers doing in the US government space. But that said, it also serves as a really fantastic framework for customers in and out of the federal space, looking to better understand their security posture and protect against threats over time. The solution that we've released um, really enables governance and compliance teams to design, build, monitor, and respond to CMMC requirements using data from dozens of Microsoft products. And the, the new solution really includes a new iteration of the workbook, new analytics rules, and, and playbooks for response. So let's talk a little bit about what's changed. One thing that we really want to highlight is that this solution is by operators and for operators. We have a very deep base of practitioners who are actively using the solution and sharing their feedback and partnering with us to make sure that we're continuing to build and design something that's that's useful for those in the field. We have a, a huge community of over 5,000 international users and based on your great feedback on what's working and, and what we can do better, we've really taken that in to, to build this new iteration and we've leveraged a lot of the amazing insights that this community has had. Um, the inter, sorry, if we jump back for a quick second. There are too many, too many good things in the, the new solution I want to quickly highlight. Um, the, the interface has been improved and we'll show that in the demo. Um, we also have a really, really great story with Microsoft Defender for Cloud. We've seen the integration between these products mature and we've been able to bring that in, having the visibility through Sentinel and the logging over time, but being able to pivot to Defender for Cloud for recommendations has, has been really valuable. And in, in the next slide um, that you'll see how, how the ecosystem really helps you um, view compliance from, from a holistic perspective. You can get started with M365 Compliance Manager and with enabling the compliance um, baselines and Defender for Cloud and Sentinel is there to provide that continuous monitoring over time through the logging sources and through the integration with dozens of Microsoft and, and third party products. And the solution is one way that you can really leverage the power of the Microsoft ecosystem to understand your, your security and to harden it over time. So if we look at the solution content, um, the workbook, is is the first step and that's really how you visualize your data you can bring in telemetry from over 25 microsoft products and you can also bring in your third party tooling we recognize that customers have made have made investments in and out of microsoft and we want to make sure we have a a single point for all of that visualized data um, the goal here for the the workbook is really to help compliance professionals security architects secops teams get that situational awareness and visibility into the security posture of your cloud workloads as it relates to CMMC. And we have recommendations that help align um, various Microsoft offerings with CMMC requirements. So you can do that seamless navigation. Once you have that initial design and assessment through the workbook, we have analytics rules that help you monitor your posture over time. And we've also built in playbooks for automated consistent responses so that your teams can spend less time in the portal and less time navigating across products and more time remediating and making sure that your environment is secure. 
Some of the benefits um, I've spoken to and, and we'll share more in the demo, but this solution really gives you that end to end story. Implementers can use it for the design stage. Um, assessors and analysts can use it as a way to monitor and, and assess your, your workloads over time and understand their security posture. You can print this easily to PDF to share it with decision makers to build it into your roadmap and to really use it as that North Star when you think about where you are relative to CMMC um, requirements. Um, and, and we're really happy about the playbook and some of the automated responses that we've built in. Um, you can also seamlessly navigate to various Microsoft Defender for Cloud recommendations to harden your workloads immediately and make sure you're staying top of, of the latest security threats. Um, there are over 200 CMMC controls and each have their own control cards. So we have hundreds of visualizations here um, that really help you understand your security posture over time at both the detailed and, and high level. And, and we're really excited to show all of that in the demo. So as I mentioned, um, the, the CMMC framework has over 200 controls. In this solution, each control has their own control card with visualized data. Um, where you see the, the blue, those are deep links. We recognize that Microsoft has a lot of portals, a lot of doc pages, and we've tried to make it um, so that all of the information is in front of you to make a decision about your posture to harden your workloads and get secure as quickly as possible. So with that, TJ is going to talk a little bit about some of the new features that we've built in um, and how you can implement those today. Thank you, Lily. Hey team, TJ Benasic from the Microsoft Sentinel product group. One of the things that I want to show you guys today is some of the things that we're doing different with this content. So this is the fifth iteration that we've made of this content over the last year and a half. Uh, first version was launched in November of 2020. Uh, and we've evolved from a workbook into the CMMC 1.0 solution and now the, the CMMC 2.0 solution. So really do want to harp on, on Lily's thoughts that this is a by operator for operator type of a workload. This is something that we've developed in very close partnership with uh, our user community, practitioners who are using this actively in production-based workloads and providing that feedback to let us know what they think and, and how we can evolve and grow. So before we jump into the content, just really do want to thank uh, all of the uh, professionals who have contributed to this offering with feedback and provided the roadmap for what what really we want this to be in, in the future of, of this capability. So uh, definitely do encourage you guys continue to uh, click on the survey in the workbook. Let us know what you think and, and continue to pro provide that great support within our preview programs. So some of the things that we're doing is adding new features. And so um, I'm not going to take you guys through like how these map to the different CMMC 2.0 controls. I just want to show you the new capabilities and where you're going to see these throughout the offering. Uh, CMMC 2.0 has 200 plus different controls. And as Lily showed, there's a control card for each one of those controls. Um, we put content into the point to where um, we've maxed out the size and capacity of this workload for, for what we can currently uh, handle in the platform, meaning if we had a single more query, we need to remove one. So that's just saying that we really wanted to put uh, everything we can to push the envelope and go no, no holds barred to, to bring the entire power of the Microsoft in the partner-based ecosystem uh, with third-party tooling and cross-cloud and hybrid and multi-cloud to really put all of that in front of a single pane of glass and allow you as the uh, operator, engineer, analyst, uh, compliance professional, to have the information that you need to make those decisions about your cloud-based posture. So in this portion, we're going to talk about uh, the new features we have. There's about 20 major new features uh, within this offering, uh, especially in the workbook based component. And so I just wanted to show you guys a quick tour of, of what some of these things are. So the first is a brand new subcomponent of the workbook called Controls Crosswalk. So when we do have that very large base of controls in there, you're going to want to know uh, where you need to go if you're looking for something very specific. So in the con Controls Crosswalk section, uh, you can see an organization of the control name, the number of the control, which family it lives in, the crosswalk to 853 to 800 and also both the primary and the secondary services that we're using to tell this story. Um, if you're wondering uh, where all this maps, it's coming directly out of our documentation page and also out of the new CMMC 2.0 technical guide that Richard Wakeman and team have put together to, to help illustrate these controls. 
control. So if you just have something uh, that you're looking for particularly and you want to know where you can find it in, in the workbook and, and how to get more information about it, you get a free text search field in there. So you can say, I care about DDoS or I care about access control or um, I'm in NIST 853 REF4 and I've met control AC2. Um, how does that overlay in this control? Or maybe just by product, you could say I'm using Azure Key Vault, like which control cards can show me more about that data. So um, just the ability to make navigation uh, much more easier when you're lo looking for something particular or wanting to know how to navigate this workbook. The next feature is geolocation enhancement. So this has been something that our, our user base is, is really finding utility in. So uh, we've enhanced these visualizations in a lot of different places to help you understand where your data is uh, geospatially uh, within the world. So we're able to use the deep telemetry from Azure Active Directory to pull the geolocation sign-in and the session-based data. So um, when you're looking at access control, you can see where in the world that users are accessing your workloads from. Um, you can see where it's concentrated. You can see primary and secondary data centers and also get an idea of where your users and, and admins are coming from. So we've put more time into this to look at not just the sign-in location, but to build upon it. So uh, controlled on classified information, CUI, very critical to the CMMC 2.0 framework. So when you have data tag things as CUI with the uh, Azure Information Protection, which is our data loss protection platform, um, when somebody accesses that, we're able to correlate their location uh, when they're accessing the sensitive data to show you even more deep enrichment around where your sensitive data is being accessed from. The next is network-based mapping. So uh, recently customers have expressed the interest to uh, get deeper into cyber key terrain and network mapping, identification of critical assets, and being able to visualize that. So um, a few of our visualizations are starting to use graph-based components to pull that out. We're also using that Better Together story with Microsoft Defender for Cloud, which has an awesome network uh, mapping uh, feature. And what this visualization shows you is all of your uh, assets, how they are connected in the network, uh, which assets can talk to which other assets, um, as well as making security recommendations. So if you want to visually look at your cyber key terrain, look at your critical assets and understand uh, how your network looks visually, this is a fantastic feature for that. So what we'll provide is uh, an overview of your assets with a single click pivot, which takes you into network maps. So when you click that pivot, it'll say, check out network maps. And that will bring you directly into Microsoft Defender for Cloud and land you on this very page. So you don't need to re-authenticate. It'll just seamlessly move you into there. And after you've looked around and uh, decided what you want to do for configuration, you can just click the uh, basically uh, tab at the top of Azure to jump, drop back into the workbook to ensure you have a very seamless experience and you're not opening up multiple windows or, or needing to authenticate again. The documentation control component is, is very important. Our customers have expressed that they're using a lot of different tools. So uh, the use case when you're going through a CMMC 2.0 level audit is bringing together all those controls that, that Lily showed you guys. So the first step is going to be open up Microsoft 365 Compliance Manager and start a CMMC 2.0 um, assessment. So that's going to give you a very deep level of documentation of your artifacts and things you want to attest to. Um, this is something that would be a complementary artifact to that. So when you look at a control card and you say, you know, I've used it to design, I've built, I've implemented, I'm happy with where it is, my telemetry looks the way I'd expect, you're also able to document that. So you can say I've implemented the control, this is the date that I've done it, and here's my notes. So if you want to see a deeper level of my configs, you're able to do that without editing the workbook. You just drop the free text in and save it and it'll stay there. So um, this can be a valuable artifact for your system security plan, for setting plans of action and milestones, just being able to document that. So when your folks have spent time on it once and they want to return to it later, they'll be able to kind of refresh themselves and, and keep an accurate status of that control. Next is our asset inventory. So uh, security professionals, we cannot monitor what we cannot measure or things that we aren't aware that are in the environment. So hardware and software based inventory, um, critical security re uh, control requirements, regardless of the framework. And uh, we built upon the asset inventory panels. So what you'll see is an Azure resource graph assessment of all of your different assets. 
when you see things in blue, they're deep linked, meaning that will take you to a deeper level of exploring your workload. So when you see at the very top of that panel, I've got a Palo Alto response uh, website that's up and running. I'm able to click on that and go to the asset to explore it. But also there's a lot more to asset inventory. So Defender for Cloud has a great uh, asset inventory page. Um, that link will take you directly into that with a seamless experience. There's also the M365 Defender inventory uh, within, within that portal. So you have the ability to look at both of those different perspectives and very seamlessly move back and forward as you're exploring your asset inventory. And uh, you're also able to export reports, not only from this panel, but also from each of those two tools that you pivot in when you want to understand you know, what assets you have and, and what you're defending. MFA monitoring is, is really critical. So um, the cybersecurity executive order uh, that, that recently is, is out in the industry um, uh, harps on things such as MFA monitoring. Uh, just this weekend, there was a, a new update from the White House talking about how critical MFA is to uh, securing workloads. So we've tried to put in more time to, to make this better for you guys and understanding the MFA story. So uh, in previous efforts, we had more of like a, a pass fail in MFA. And our, our customer feedback was we wanted more granularity to understand this. So what you're going to see now is monitoring MFA is a is a much deeper level. So you'll see the user that's using MFA. You'll get a deep link that'll take you into their AAD profile if you want to understand more about who they are, where they're coming from, what permissions they have, what devices they have. You'll get summaries, and it's um, depending on the perspective of the CMMC control. So this one is uh, monitoring MFA failures. So at the top, I see my test user has failed 475 times. I see a trend line as far as uh, when that's happening. It's pretty pretty flat right now uh, because that's a scripted test user and also the last time that they failed to sign in. So you're able to use that to understand uh, when you have holes in your MFA and identity uh, architectures. Sensitive data tracking is key. So the AIP team has put out a new data table, um, information uh, uh, data events uh, that's very helpful in getting a, a better level of granularity and I think better data normalization. So when you're protecting CUI within CMMC 2.0, you need to inventory your sensitive data as well. So what you can see in here is a list of uh, data labels, uh, highly confidential and secret are some of the examples that we have in the demo environment. You have a deep link to move over to AIP to check your data labels and, and logging of it. And you can also see which users are going to be accessing, you know, your AIP labels to understand if I have CUI, the five W's of what it is, where it lives, why it's sensitive, who's accessing it, where it's moving to, you know, is it going to a USB or a portable device? And these kind of panels will really help you uh, take sensitive data, a discovery and exploration to a, to a much uh, deeper level. So there are mobile device access requirements for the CMMC 2.0 framework, and we wanted to be able to show you a, a single pane. So not just in your cloud, multi-cloud, hybrid, on-prem, and all those different components, but also looking wider to that into user devices and, and endpoint access and BYOD. So um, we're able to pull in the authentication data and also the endpoint data. So when your users are accessing uh, workloads and applications, you can see when they're using mobile devices and what browser level they have in which applications applications that they're using. So that allows you to understand like how are users using these devices? If they're managed devices, are they secured appropriately? Are the browsers uh, that they're using secured within your requirements? Um, are you comfortable with uh, the application access? And just giving you a picture of how mobile devices are being used within your environment and, and allowing you as the assessor to determine what controls you need in place to secure that data. This panel here is one that you'll see uh, a lot more of. Uh, this is uh, really showing the win theme between Defender for Cloud and, and Microsoft Sentinel. So Microsoft Sentinel will aggregate all of your data. Um, it'll tell you when you have an issue. Defender for Cloud is going to help you respond to that. It's going to help you harden your workload. So when we tell you that there's an issue, especially with your policy or recommendation or vulnerability, Defender for Cloud will allow you to fix it and respond to it. So this panel will show all of the different recommendations and it's organized by the CMMC 2.0 controls. You get a pass fail to understand what your status is and you'll always get a deep link to remediate that. That'll drop you in a Defender for Cloud on the exact place that you need to make the control fix. So um, really allowing you to take it from just a report into a very active response to measure configuration and, and control management drift. 
File identification. So this has been a panel that we put together to identify basically problem-based files or pieces of code in your environment that could be a problem. So mobile code, things like Shockware and Flash and, and file types that could be dangerous to your environment. Um, you might not want those uh, within your environment. You might want to control it. But the first thing you need to understand is what it is and where it is. So what this panel will do is uh, index all of your mobile code uh, by file type. And you can configure that based on what you care about. Uh, it'll give you the file name, how often you see it, also the file locations. So that's not just in your endpoint, uh, in your Windows and your Linux and your different virtual machines. Um, but also in your cloud-based assets, so your OneDrive, your SharePoint. So regardless of where that file lives, you're going to be able to index that in this one panel. You also notice that search panel up there. Um, that's a win theme that we have within the workbook to where if you don't understand the KQL query language, like maybe you're a new user or you're not in Sentinel super often, you're able to just search something and, and sort that panel to see that. At any point to where you want to see more, um, all of these panels are based in your data uh, that you've already invested in. So you can can drop it in the query language if you want to get more details about it as well. So really trying to take it from like uh, like a beginner to an advanced phase, depending on how deep you want to explore that control. System baselining, uh, this is something that we're really excited about. So what we're using is Microsoft Defender for Cloud. It takes the Azure monitoring agent or your MMF, MMA agents, if you have the, the legacy versions in there. It looks at the endpoint for a security baseline recommendation. So it's going all the way into the file, the registry, um, all of those, those very deep and granular components of an endpoint to make an assessment of uh, recommendations and, and baseline things that you need to be able to control. So CMMC 2.0 gets very specific in certain areas, especially in the endpoint. This allows you to see all of your endpoints. Uh, in this demo environment, we've got 10 virtual machines. You get a pass-fail based assessment, and you also get a listing of the assets that are passing and failing. So um, you see the control at the top is ensure audit authentication policy change is set to success. Uh, if I was failing that, I would get a list of assets that are passing and failing. If I needed to change an asset failing, I could drop into that virtual machine and, and make that configuration. Or I could use uh, Microsoft Endpoint Manager in tune to, uh, to adjust that security baseline configuration to, to my requirements for security. Access control and identity is very key, um, not, not only within zero trust models, but also within the CMMC 2.0 framework. So uh, at any point that we're talking about access control, identity and authentication, we're going to use a lot of that um, better together with Azure Active Directory to allow you to look at these different stories. So when you see a, a grouping of users, this one's for access control, you can see how often they're authenticating. You can see the last time they came in. And when you want to drill down on that user, that deep link takes you into their AAD uh, user identity page where you can get all the metadata around that user. For security professionals, that's super important because context is there. So P demo user at the very top. If I look at that user and their general user account and I see that they've got admin rights and they've got multiple unmanaged devices and they're coming in from countries that I don't feel that I have workloads in, that's starting to set a pattern of unusual that I might want to explore a little bit further as a security professional. So allowing the assessor and the analyzer when they see things that are unusual to drill down and help rationalize that. So. Um, our CMMC solution is, is very geared towards uh, operational data, seeing your data in practice, and not only assessing, but also being able to remediate, investigate, and resolve it. And so this is a really good capability to, to get some context around understanding how your controls are working in practice. This is a panel uh, that you'll see in a few places as far as evaluating the efficiency of your security controls. And so tuning a workload is very important. Uh, if you have a new workload, security tools are designed to scream by nature and say that you have all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, it doesn't matter what technology you're using, you know, our Microsoft tech or other things in the industry, you're going to always have to tune a security control in a new environment and, and over time to make sure that you're getting high efficiency. And so what this panel allows you to do is look at the uh, amount of your tuning and your baseline to understand when tools either need to be investigated or potentially tuned. So this is a good example. Um, all these spark lines are showing our different Microsoft products and how they're alerting and how frequently they're doing it. You see on about January 30th, Microsoft Sentinel peaks. It moves above our baseline, which is about a quarter thousand alerts per day, and it jumps into you know, 1.5, 2,000 alerts per day. So that is either an attack 
or it is uh, an issue with a new alert that requires tuning. Uh, from this one, I can tell you in the demo environment, it's onboarding uh, new threat intel alerts that are being tuned. Um, what we want to do is uh, flatten that baseline over time, put it down to the other tools to where we understand it's normal. When we start to see little peaks like this up and down, that's a lot more of like attack-based traffic. So when you see those peaks, you can look at that and say, hey, what's going on in Defender for Endpoint? Like I'm getting a peak in there. I need to check that day and see if that's an incident or maybe an alert that's, that's falsely firing. So uh, ability to, to tune those controls over time the next one is our security incident, so I'm super excited about this. We've had a lot of feedback from um, our different customers and partners about integration of third-party tooling. So previous versions of the content were built upon our security alerts, which were using Microsoft first-party tools. Uh, and folks were saying, well, I've got a Carbon Black, I've got a CrowdStrike, I've got Semantic or McAfee, and like, how do I get those alerts into these control cards to tell the story? So what we've done is we've moved away from the security alert table and we've moved into Sentinel security incidents. The reason that this is incredibly powerful is all of your alerts for your third-party tooling are now going to be showed in this. You don't need to do additional configuration. You've already invested in your first-party and third-party tools. You have your alerts configured. And now when there's requirements for using these controls, this one's data loss prevention, um, anything that's fallen within DLP or data exfiltration is going to come up, including your third-party tools. And within one click, you're able to drop into the incident and go straight to the investigation blade. So uh, just a very seamless experience when especially bringing in your, your first and third-party tooling to, to tell these control stories. Conditional access is, is really important for understanding what the policies are and where they're being used. So you're able to see which policies are, are the most used and the most effective. Uh, you're able to see how applications are being used and also potentially uh, identify holes in your identity-based posture or your conditional access. So if something's being used very frequently, uh, you're going to want to pay attention to it if it's not used as much. You know, you might want to look at it and determine why. Maybe it's a CUI policy and you don't have a lot of CUI data, so it can help highlight another area to, uh, to evaluate your posture. Alert tuning, I'm also super excited about this one and, and the work that we've done. So um, when you've got all of these different tools and these alerts, um, you need to be able to evaluate how effective they are. So a security alert is not going to tell you how effective it is, and a new tool is going to provide a lot of signal and noise and false positive, which is going to bog down your security teams. So what this panel will do is evaluate the efficiency of your alert. So we're also using the Sentinel security incidents table. When you close an incident, you have to categorize it as a true-false, uh, basically true positive, uh, true benign, false positive, or unknown. And when you do that, uh, the true positives and the false and the benigns are all being categorized. So this is showing you for these alerts how effective they are. And when you see something at the top, uh, Microsoft Defender for Office has given me a very high fidelity of uh, phishing emails. Great, I'm happy with that. I want my SOC to use that in production. I'm super happy with it. Um, down here at the bottom, when we're looking at creation of forwarding and redirect rule, um, that alert probably isn't working the way that I want. I've got 0% efficiency. I haven't detected any true positives, so I need to spend some more time with that. If that is generating a lot of alerts, um, I definitely need to tune that down to get a higher efficiency level and, and make sure that I'm giving the, the full bang for the buck out of each one of these alerts. Security orchestration, automation, and response is key. We've added panels to show you the assets that you have configured to make recommendations on which one you should use. This is really trying to save time to put your analysts on uh, really away from manual repeatable tasks into things that are more interesting to where they can spend their time. You're also going to get the ability to jump into these assets to, to evaluate you know, what the SOAR workflows are within uh, Sentinel playbooks and automation. These are low code, no code ways to, uh, to automate you know, repeatable tasks. Then you can look at things like efficiency, like how efficient is this SOAR playbook? How much time is it saving your security operations or your GRC teams? How often is it triggered? So a lot of really interesting ways to, to look at that capability. And the last one that we have is vulnerability management. So what vulnerability management will allow you to do is uh, evaluate your posture. So we're using the uh, available uh, Defender for Cloud VM-based capabilities. We do have future tracks to include things like uh, Tenable Nessus data and also uh, Defender for Endpoint as we get those telemetry components integrated. But really trying to show you when you have a, a critical exploit, a CBE, what is the posture of that asset? Um, on the very top of that, we see our Contoso domain controller. It's got a lot of problems. That's something we care about. So we want to spend some time to, 
to harden out that asset and make sure that that we can withstand attacks and, and monitor the environment the way that it needs to be. All right, team. So I know that was a, that was a fast and furious look at 20 or so new features that we have. So now we're going to uh, shift focus and, and get into the demo based component uh, of the the workload. So we're going to look at the control configuration management CM.L2345 for least functionality and show you how this looks in practice for using this solution. So the first thing that I'm going to do is build and design to make sure that I've got least functionality in, in my workload. I'm going to use the control card on the top left of each control card. You're going to get uh, anything in blue is a deep link, meaning you can drill down. So uh, overview the least functionality control that takes you to our docs page to understand what the control is, what you need to do. Uh, you've also got a deep link into CMMC 2.0, so you can pull up the government documentation, you know, straight from their requirements. Um, they're deep links, so when any of these links change, you're going to land on the most recent version of it, which is awesome. We have our primary and secondary services. This is our Microsoft overlay and meeting these controls. We do it by capability. So um, uh, if you're using uh, Azure Active Directory or Okta, whatever it is, you can kind of understand as a capability how you can integrate that in this place. If you don't know what the product is, there's a link to the product page. If you want to access that product, you don't have to remember where it is. There's a deep link to go to the Azure Active Directory portal or, or whatever the tool is. Recommended logs. Uh, every control card will have a visualization within the login and telemetry. It can be Azure Resource Graph, Azure Policy, Security Alerts, Tools and Practice, Metrics, you name it. But anytime we do that, we want to show our work and tell you where we're getting it from. So in this example, we're using the security recommendation from Defender for Cloud. If you don't know the product or how that log is structured, you get a link to the docs page and the product page. Um, if you're building this for the first time and you want a, a full featured guide and, and how to implement the control, uh, Richard Wakeman and team have put together the Microsoft Technical Reference Guide for CMMC 2.0. Clicking on that link will bring you to the download page. It'll uh, pull up a 400 page document where you can really dive in if you need more guidance. Then you get the controls crosswalk talking about uh, how does it overlay to this 853 and, and 171. So once I'm happy with that control in practice, I'm going to move over to assessment. I'm going to use the assessment component to look at my policy and evaluate how I'm doing over time. I'm looking for configuration drift. Um, I'm also reinforcing those with alerting rules. So the alerting rules basically allow you to watch this over time. Um, you don't want to say eyes on glass to the workbook at all times. So when your posture changes, you know, it's it's default configured to fire once a week for less than 70% compliance. It'll then allow you to uh, to notify your teams to say that you, you have a configuration drift, something's changed, you probably want to respond to that. Um, when you do want to respond, anytime that we make a recommendation, there will be a deep link to what we call the expert system for remediation. Um, definitely within Microsoft Defender for Cloud, that's one of the primary components, as well as Defender for Endpoint and, and our other tooling. So um, when there's a recommendation, there'll be a deep link to a, a remediation to, to help you evaluate, assess, and, and implement. We talked about the alerting rules. Uh, the two that we have, the new ones, are uh, monitoring for CMMC level one and level two. Previous versions of the solution did it by control family. The feedback was there were just too many rules. It was too noisy. So we've reduced those for greater efficiency with level one and level two. And we've got our SOAR automation. So the three automations that we have in place are notify governance compliance team. When that alert triggers, it automatically will send an email to a monitoring distro or personnel of your choice. Uh, it will include the five W's of the event with uh, deep links to allow you to make remediations. It will also post a message into your Teams chat if you have a, a monitoring Teams channel, really to help you build awareness. That's super valuable when you have folks that uh, maybe don't live in the tooling all the time. They just want to get an email, maybe an auditor or regulator that comes in there once or twice a year. They want to know when, when things deviate. That'll give you the ability to do that. We also have two or three uh, playbook automations in there for ticketing. So knowing that we have separation of duties, the folks that are monitoring your workloads um, often are not going to have the ability to change it, nor should they, you know, depending on the size and, and structure of your enterprise. So when the monitoring team or the GRC team sees an issue and they want to respond to it, it'll create a JIRA ticket or uh, a ServiceNow ticket or an Azure DevOps item. So what we're doing is really trying to document. So when you see an issue, um, if you're not able to do it within your role-based access control or you just want to put it in your plan of action, you're able to document it when you see an issue and, and that's what that does. So now I'm going to show you guys the solution practice. 
going to drop out the deck and we'll go into the demo base component. So I'm now into the solution. So if, if you're wondering now how to deploy the solution, uh, go into Microsoft Sentinel under Content Hub, search CMMC 2.0. It'll bring up the solution within a few clicks. It's going to deploy this workbook, um, the two new monitoring rules and the three new playbooks, and it'll lay that down within your Sentinel instance. Keep in mind, uh, one note is we have retired the CMMC workbook and the CMMC 1.0 solution. So um, that doesn't mean that it's deleted from your workspace. We know uh, a lot of our users have spent a lot of time with custom engineering. You know, you'll still have those previous versions, um, but um, when you go to deploy a new version of it, it'll only have the 2.0 solution. So at the top, we have parameter-based filtering. So this is the way that I build a custom report. Uh, if I'm new and I want to know what I need to do to get started, um, that's a helper panel that gives you all that information. It matches our readme file um, to let you understand what you need to do. If the workload isn't coming out the way that you expect, double check the getting started steps. You know, it's really important to make sure that you're setting it up the right way. If you have a blank panel, that's not always bad. That lets you evaluate a gap or a hole in your architecture. So keep that in mind as well. If if I'm not seeing uh, endpoint detection response alerting, um, that's evaluating decision making. So do I have an EDR solution? Am I licensed for it? Is it onboarded to Sentinel? Is it tuned correctly? You know, all those are enabling decision making. So even if the panel is blank, uh, it's going to enable that. So keep that in mind as well. Here we have the ability to uh, customize the reporting. So we've tested this up to 200 workspaces or more. What that means is if you're a huge enterprise or a managed security service provider, you can use cross workspace query, Azure Lighthouse. You can see down into your, your cross cloud, your multi-cloud, your on-premise. So whatever your requirements are, you're able to specify either all of your workspaces and subs, some of them, none of them, whatever you feel is required. It's a custom assessment. Uh, 200 or so panels below that, they all respond to that. So very easy and you don't have to get into query. You also have a time range filter. So we've reduced this for performance. Um, it's now seven through 30 days. But if you have a need to look at more data, like say I want to see a whole year, I can set a custom report to do that. So uh, keep that in mind. It's really just to make the experience much more snappy. I do want to call out our survey. Um, this is super important because we're really relying on this in the product group to get your feedback and let us know what you think. So when you're going through this and your different team members are looking at it, definitely fill it out. Um, it's anonymous unless you want to tell us like who you are, um, but tell us you know what you think and what you want to see the, the future of this workload being. We, we're super, super attentive to this and we use this to drive our roadmaps for future iterations of the content. I now have the, the overview of CMMC 2.0. I can click on this to go to the, the government's 2.0 page and, and evaluate the control and, and their needs. But what we're going to do is focus on that use case scenario for least functionality. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to posture assessment. And when I do that, I populate a sub workbook panel for posture assessment. So you'll notice there's basically five or six panels. It's all cuts on the same data, which is your policy that Microsoft Defender for Cloud is showing. So I can sort it by level. Uh, right now I'm gonna tell it, I just care about CMMC one foundational level controls. And when I do that, you'll notice that all the panels respond to that. So within the last week, uh, which is the, the time threshold that we set, within level one, I've got about a thousand assessments. So if there's a policy and there's three assets being assessed, and say they're all passing, that's going to give me a three out of three. So every asset with a control uh, counts as a score of one, and we look at that. So overall, I've got a thousand policy assessments. I'm about halfway there, 50%. So this would be triggering my weekly alert until I get that above 70% or, or change that threshold. So I've got a lot of different recommendations in here. These are all the different things that I need to do um, across my workload. So this is telling me, you know, in level one, what are the different controls that I have? Uh, how am I doing by controls? If I want to sort to uh, what's most impactful by total or uh, what's passed or failed the most, I'm able to do that. And at any point we make a recommendation, there's a deep link which takes you into Defender for Cloud to fix it. We'll show you guys that in a moment. Whenever there is a recommendation, you probably also care about like which assets uh, need the most work or uh, where you want to spend your time. Uh, here's an example of the deep link. Um, this asset workstation 20 It's passing 9 out of 16. Um, there's some controls that I need to spend some time on. So if I just want to go to the asset and understand it, I'm able to drop into the VM page. 
I can even look at security and get an idea of all up, even outside of just CMMC, you know, how is this asset doing? Um, 26 recommendations, it's a super vulnerable asset. I want to spend some time with this thing to, to make sure it's not a attack vector. I get recommendations over time. This is super cool for measuring configuration and compliance drift. So at any point that a recommendation is made, it becomes a score of one. So a recommendation is a gap or a weakness. If the recommendation isn't applicable, I should suppress it. And there's ways to document how you do that and if it's temporary or permanent. But basically, once I'm happy with, with what that policy layout is, when there's things changing, uh, it's a gap in my workload. So at least within the last week, I've got a peak on March 17th, and it seems to be getting worse. I'm getting the higher policy assessments on the 20th. So as an assessor, I'm using this to drive decision making to say what changed, who onboarded assets and securely in my environment, um, what do I need to do to uh, regulate this? Over time, you want this line to be as flat and as low as possible and just use it to drive decision makings and, and measuring that configuration and compliance drift. So I get the overall, and next I want to drop down into controls crosswalks. We're looking at least functionality, but maybe I don't know exactly where that is. That's how we're going to use the controls crosswalk page. So I can say least. And I see right here, it is in CM L2346. So that's going to be configuration management L2. Uh, I see the alignment to the uh, 800-171 control. It also maps to 853 CM7. And I get a list of the Microsoft primary and secondary services that are being used. So I can use this to really look for anything. If I care about uh, 52 and 853, I can see all the crosswalks to that control. Um, maybe I want to know where Azure Key Vault helps me out. I can see all the controls that, that map there. So this is just helpful in, in navigating the instance, but we now know where we want to go for least functionality. So I'll go up to here. Um, least functionality was in configuration management. So notice right here, I do need to select these at the same time. I need to have a level and I need to have a control family. So I want to go to level two in configuration management, and that now populates our configuration management subpage. And I've got a lot of different controls, so I could select everything. I'm not going to now. I'm just going to that one control card that we looked at for least functionality. And now as I come down, I've got the control card, which allows us to go to our documentation. Uh, we talked about what all these different components are. Um, I'm looking at now a policy assessment that's very specific to least functionality, all the different things in my environment that are there. The one thing that I see at the top is probably going to be the biggest concern. I have storage accounts with public access, so I don't want my sensitive data to be exposed to the Internet, especially not if it's CUI. So, Anytime we make a recommendation, we've got a deep link. And so I'm going to show you guys an example of that. I clicked on this and it's going to seamlessly pivot us into Defender for Cloud. I don't have to re-authenticate. I'm now in the exact page that I need to go to. Uh, you'll notice the assessment numbers will match what we saw on the dashboard. I've got 36 storage accounts that are exposed to the internet. Some of them can stay in secret and highly confidential data. So that's going to be a huge problem. What I'm going to do is select them all and fix. And once I apply that, that will basically put in the network based controls to ensure that they are not exposed to the Internet. Now, very coolly with these deep links, I don't have to go into a different session. I can just click and I drop right back into the workload to ensure that I have the seamless experience. So once I go through that control and I'm happy and I've assessed all these policies to my, my needs and they're going to be a lot more green, um, once I feel that I have accurately uh, put in all the CMMC 2.0 controls and assessed it here, I now have my ability to document it. So I'm going to say that I've implemented it as of today's date, which is 23 March 22. I make sure to type on the loudest keyboard I can possibly find. So if you guys notice that, I apologize. And then I can put in my notes. So see system security plan uh, at example ssp.com. So you'll notice there I was able to put in free text notes. So um, users have provided really good feedback that one, I need to document this for my system security plans, my artifacts, and uh, my plan of action and milestones. But folks um, have had challenges in editing workbooks. It can be kind of complex at times. So here, I didn't need to edit the workbook. I was able to put a free text note in there. And so the next time that I look at this control, I can put in you know any amount of text that I want and assess it. Um, do make sure that you save it. It's going to retain the save, but you do have to save it to make sure that it keeps it there. 
And so that's how we use uh, that base component of it. So the last thing that I want to show you guys before we close out the demo is the most primary use case that we have, which is folks that want to print this as a custom report. So there's two ways that you can do it. You can do it in Microsoft Defender for Cloud in the Regulatory Compliance Initiative. Um, that prints off a very clean PDF. Customers have had like really good value in using the executive summary of that base component. And you can partner with this and Sentinel will provide you like that very deep level of technical depth across all of your different controls. So anything that you select on screen, you're able to do a custom report. So I go to print content. And what it allow me to do is take anything that I see on screen, um, even up to the entire report. Uh, if you select the entire report, um, give it a second to populate, um, depending on how big your workload is. When you do that, it's going to fire off a few hundred queries at once. And then you're able to print off exactly what you see and hand it off to your, your auditors, your security leadership. Uh, and what you can see now is exactly what we just went through for this use case release functionality. And I can print it as a document or save this as a PDF, which is a little bit more common to, to hand that off as an artifact. So super powerful as far as the reporting use case. And we put a lot of work in to make sure that that seamless experience is there for you guys. So that's what we have now for the today's demo based component. I uh, definitely want to thank you guys again for your partnership. Super excited about getting this out to the community. Also seeing what you guys think and, and how we can make this better for your mission based needs. So that's all we have for now, team. Thanks and back to you, Lily. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. Um, um, so, so as mentioned, mentioned at the, the beginning of the demo, we really recommend that you jump into the Azure portal, enable the Sentinel trial, jump into Content Hub and, and check out the CMMC solution. And as always, use the survey um, to get your feedback because as, as shown, we, we really incorporate it and, and use that value from our community to make our products better. So thanks for joining us and look forward to see how you use the solution. Thanks, Steve.